Oh, look, I'm wearing my makeup. Oh, it's another time for that. Let's go. I need to a super great vest. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. This contains uh, one of the things that came, well, the last entry I think it is, is the eulogy for my grandmother. Not now, but some other time we will deal with that. Uh, oh, uh, G, um, 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 uh, G. Harper's uh, Liquid Sound Lounge Summer Book Party. It's, uh, what day is today? This is, uh, right here. Uh, what day is today? We're now dealing with Sunday, July 21st. Next Sunday, July 28th, if you are in New York, then you might run into, uh, well, you have an opportunity to go to the boat ride. Uh, I don't know what to tell you other than uh, where, the, where the tickets at. I'm not having time. Look, my associate with the book, this, this might be the last year, well, it says it might be the last year, it's the 20th year. Um, I've been with the crew, well, Jeannie's one of them. Anyway, I was there at the first one, and I was, don't worry about it, I'm associated with this. So I have to be there since it's going to be the last one, and luckily I could be in the States when this happens. But you can get your tickets from, or just go to liquidsoundlounge.com. Liquid soundlounge.com the summer boat party if you know if you're hip you're hip if you ain't you don't need to be there anyway uh well, some water uh oh we were in the midst of an incredible heat wave uh come from the south of the united states all the way up the east coast all the way up you know new york i'm in virginia right now right now it's uh 86 degrees fahrenheit so it might get up to 96, but it's 86 now. And let me see. Oh, for you international people, for you, you know, whatever, that means it's about 37 degrees Celsius. Um, I'm actually used to Celsius now, so it's always kind of weird. It was up to basically, uh, when it's 45 degrees Celsius, it's like, you know, but it was really, really bad. Uh, I don't need this phone. Why am I going with this phone? Uh, get out of the way. Uh, this today, what we're going to do right now, I should say today now, First of all, I should explain. Um, when I first started this channel, uh, my YouTube channel, way back when it was, whatever, I had it for a while, um, eight years ago, whenever it is, the idea, see, I always said when YouTube first got anything, YouTube for me, or well, I told the sound guys, everybody would, anybody who would listen, YouTube is an archival backup, it's, for, it's an archival backup. You know, in other words, you put your thing up. It's for archives. That's 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 my that's what I my orientation towards YouTube. So when when they I think when I first started, they said to let them want to monetize. I said no, 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 because that was a disclaimer. Said no, this is no, I will never monetize. It's rolling back, never monetize. In fact, if if you see my, all my stuff is under Creative Commons. You know, they have to the stand the YouTube thing, but I have Creative Commons, right? Basically means is that you can take any of these things, any of these postings, and you can do it as long as you give me credit. Okay, that's all it means, right? And uh, because it's not monetized, well, I don't, I don't stress about this stuff because I'm, uh, I'm just not into money. We won't get into that right now. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So, when I, so what? After, after a while, I thought, well, you know, uh, because when a guy, when Belle, when we first started uh, with, with Belle, I, I um. I said, uh, he said, well, well, we were just talking. I would just talk to him in the library down at the University of Fort Hare. And he said, are you writing this stuff down? I go, no. So then I thought, YouTube channel. Then I realized that there's software that can change audio, right, to text. So basically, when I, I the reason why I started this well, is basically because I wanted, if any particular point I want to take this stuff and make a book series of books or whatever have you all I got to do is take the software and make it the text now this is important because I have to tell you I'm what call I'm not just an outlier I'm an outlier's outlier you know Malcolm Gladwell says but I'm like well I'm an outlier's outlier you know for instance I won't get it but you'll understand as you if you listen to all this stuff Okay, so I thought, well, everybody's trying to get money up front for YouTube and da, da, da. Well, if if you are archiving this, 
and this software now that changes audio to text, then what you basically should do is change your or your your text. If you, and, and I try to make these like timeless, you know, like like not specific. Some of them, some of them are. Um, so that what would happen is basically I can have my own books. Then if I, you know, if I'm, I'm, I don't do the stuff at home lecture and whatever have you, you know, there's these ways now you can just print up, you know, digitally, you can just print up a hundred books and also have it down, whatever it is. And when you do your lecture, you can just sell it. It's like being a musician, right? The, 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 um, the corporation, the company, whatever it is, they really make the money. You only make your money by touring, you see? So basically, if I make books and I tour with these books, then, well, there you go. Bob's your uncle. You un people understand you understand so um, so this one is going to be pretty long so I have to tell you that right now because I have to go through a little bit just a little bit prune juice know your system and know that prune juice I, I can't lick this one prune juice for me it works very well. I don't need those laxative teas. I don't need no laxative. Prune juice is just normal. And when my, my grandmother she used to make the, the, the double boiling pot, the, the, the glass pot, and you have the prune juice, and you have the prunes here, da, 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 and you make the prune juice real from the prunes. Da, da, da. So this is the closest I can get around here to real prune juice. Anyway, so every once in a while, I do prune juice. Oh, move, 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 move. Put that there. Put it here. Come on. Sorry. I guess I'm making it longer than it should. So, uh, I'm going to go through some stuff. Uh, let me start. This, this is more uh, thing on, on radio. I think I might even call this uh, ADOS Journey or something like that. Uh, uh, I won't do that. I won't do that. No, I won't do this part at all. But it's going to, it's going to end up. I'll tell you what it's going to end up. It's going to end up with... Me actually reading this entire uh, article I wrote, right? I wrote when I, when we were performing the Outsider, what my what we call seminal whatever pieces of, of work. Um, so you'll learn about that. So that's the end. But let's start someplace else. How I got to the radio station? Not how I got to the radio station. I'm gonna take this off because I can't read. Plus, this is hard to read this thing here. Oh, this is. Uh, this is uh, Gilbert Giles. Um, um, he's part of the Creative Unity uh, Collective that I, I trained in radio. Uh, radio show. And he, he's a great sketch artist. I'll show you another thing he did with another thing. Anyway, so he did this. I used to have this t-shirt with African No Apartheid thing. So he did this thing right here. So I, just thought I, well, I thought it was in this thing here. So I'm going to start here. Uh, I'll leave that alone too. It's not pertaining to it. Oh, oh, I know what I need to read. Let me start here. I think it's in here. Oh yeah, this is sort of weirdly. I think it's my undergraduate thesis of the paper, whatever it is. Um, but let me start properly. Let's start with a poem, right? This is a poem. I have many alliterations as a poet. Alliterations, many names as a poet. I started out. Um, with uh, uh, Tony Sloan, 1971, right? Then it it morphed to, I think, Tony Sloan floating. I'm not sure. But then you had this Tony Sloan run together, right? lowercase letters. So this is one of those poems from that period. Uh, the rhythm, the rhythm has changed. The rhythm has changed. The jungle has shaped itself into concrete and soot and our people do not know where to look, where to put the pieces, and it hurts. Not like the lion's paw or even the needle's infectious gnaw. The rhythm has changed. The jungle has renamed itself to claim our young while they are still alive. And we won't know if the music and what is nice will be enough of a price to regain our sanity. It does hurt so very much to bring the rhythm of no chains to our downtrodden name. We, these 30 million or so, who have much more to go. Okay, so 
this this is the I guess the paper is entitled it's entitled uh, uh, Metamorphosis Radio uh, uh, Radio W A J S like Anthony John Sloan. Okay, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm just read this first this first part. It's like the introduction or something, a preamble, whatever you call it. This is a great story. It has violence. I ripped up eight copies of page 27 before I got it right. Sex. There's a passing comment on lovemaking. Drugs. Actually, it mentions getting high on grass. Passion. If you read between the lines on page nine. Beauty. Even though I don't describe her, Karen is a beautiful woman. Poetry. Yours faithful's very own. Your faithful's very own. That would be me. Compassion. If you read between the lines on page nine. Religion, somewhere in the program schedule. Greed, or something or sometimes called lust for money, which is one of the reasons I started on uh, the WBGO project in the first place. Action, I type my ass off. Desire, if you read between the lines on page nine. Censorship, I cut out most of the... I cut out most of shit. You know what I'm saying? Brilliance. Need I say more? Oh, this reference to WBGO, the first, uh, uh, when I got out of uh, undergraduate, right, the first thing I did was uh, uh, WBGO was a, it was an educational station in, uh, in, in, um, in Newark, New Jersey. And so they would change, they would re doing something with the license to make it a, a community formatted station. And so one of the, my projects was to work on that, right? And uh, so I made a, there's a program schedule. I made the program schedule for that. Um, let me just see what the, if I have to, Oh, so the program schedule Monday, Sunday through Saturday basically looks something like this. Okay, so I don't need to say no more of that. Okay, so we're, do, we're through with this. Oh boy, oh, there we go. Okay, it's there someplace. So I think that's my under. I think that's my undergraduate paper for you know what my degree is. Actually, my degree is in communications. Undergraduate degree is in communications. Um, I'll be some too. <gasps> Sorry, I gotta take that. It's my sacred. Okay, so that's sort of my, you know, so I've been in radio for a long time. That was, uh, I guess I graduated in uh, 76, so that's 76. Okay, now I'm going to skip ahead. Uh, when I graduated, I, w I, w I went to graduate school um, for like two and a half years, whatever it is, for playwriting, uh, for a master's degree. Uh, everything but dissertation. I didn't write the play. It's, it's a long story, but uh, it's weird because the way I function, unbeknownst to me, sometimes the forces just say, boop, you're going to do this. And I have to, uh, I'm going through that right now with my current graduate degree. I showed you that for that. Okay. Here's what I have to start reading. Oh, I shouldn't have read that other poem. Well, I'll skip this poem because I read a poem already to you. See, this is when, when when they had the computers where they did the paper, you know, zzz, 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 and then it would come and perforated like that. You know, the old time computers. That's, I guess that's in the 90s, early 90s, the 80s, actually. Uh, Every Wednesday morning from 9 a.m. to noon to 12 noon, listeners will experience No Mo Radio, hosted and produced by Anthony Sloan. Well, I, I guess I better read this. No Mo. Okay. It's gonna be a while. See, this is what I gotta read to you. So if you gotta go away, you know, just hit the like and, and leave. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there we go. Spirit. Of, it's called the spirit of Nomo. Nomo, the manifestation of Entu. In this spiritual grace we call space, bringing travel time towards the edge of our people's sublime, nullifying what the thee of they call crime. No more. Past social psychic stages in this earth's play, we continue to crave 
opening the all other shackled locked voyages taken when shamed but now renamed so only the positive may lay claim nomo onto and into to being our last but not final freeing so this is uh, oh I wrote this under the under the Tony Sloan uh, thing in circa 1978 Livingston College at Rutgers University of Piscataway New Jersey okay and I get a little next to it. nomo is nomo is the word uh, that driving power giving life and effectiveness to all things the revealed power behind Entu you know Entu NTU but this is a Southern African you know thing. I've been connected with South Africa, Southern Africa for a long time. Uh, N2 is the universal force, the force in which being and beings coalesce, the point at which there is no contradiction. Okay. Yes, for all you listeners who have asked Anthony, uh, for all you listeners who have asked uh, Anthony, was he going to have a, a show, etc.? The answer is here and now. Here is how he describes his road to our airwaves at WBAI. In September of 1983, I volunteered to answer phones here at WBAI. I had been listening to Bernard White, to, to Bernard White's program, Emanations, and I found it closest to my style of radio broadcast, meaning that um, uh, I did a program in college called Variations of Backlist. So those kind of ingredients was in, in, involved in into uh, with, with Bernard's emanations. Uh, while volunteering, I met Bernard and offered to help him in any way and in, in any capacity I could. I was particularly interested in the Jesse Jackson campaign, wanting to follow it and at some point do a special. The special did happen in the fall of 1984 during the marathon. Okay. Since that special, I have done specials on Prince, Louis Armstrong, Black Immigration with Ron McGee. Ron McGee, peace and blessings on his eternal soul. That was my radio partner. Every time I get a good thing, radio partner in crime. Uh, let me, I have to explain, right? We both were at Livingston College at the time. We both graduated, you know, uh, from the communications department. We were like the same, with the same height, same com com complexion, basically like the same person. Right? When people asked me what I was going to do, actually because I was going, I was going back to the theater in New York. I said, they said, well, aren't you going to NBC, ABC, one of those things? Because oh, oh, I should say this. We were all, we were both very clean companies at the time. We called puppies. We looked the part, you know, so we can be hired, you know, an educated little degree, we can be hired in these companies. Um, so luckily, well, luckily for me, I've always had something where I, 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 if, I never regret what I've done because I always have an example of why, phew. anyway, so Ron went on to do, to stay in, 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 in radio. And I think he went to some station in the South, whatever have you, hooked, some dude, some white dude hooked up with. So when that white dude got, went to, I think it was San Francisco, he brought Ron along with him. Now Ron at that point was editing and stuff like that. Then when the guy went to New York, again, he brought it wrong with him. All you people, this is the way it used to be. You go to a small market, you discover it, and then you go to a bigger, a mid medium sized market, and you discover it, and then you finally get to the big market if you're so lucky, if they say. Anyway, then what happened, Ron realized that they were not going to let me stop editing. You know, I'm never going to, to advance. So he stopped. And he was at, B, he, he knew BA, BI in the 60s, he was early on BAI before, just in the 60s when they were at the church, you know. So he came back to BAI and I was there. So we, we hooked up, we started doing these specials. Man, we were amazing. It was like, it was like a, a, an amazing partnership, whoa, you know. Uh, so um, the, when they say uh, this thing about, uh, what, 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 what did they say? What the heck that is? Oh. Uh, the uh, immigration spectrum, um, that was about the, around the uh, uh, 86, it was about the, um, or the centenary or whatever of the Statue of Liberty. We did other specials, including uh, incredible Ella Baker special, we did a bunch of stuff, unbelievable. Oh, Ella Baker, it's the Ella Baker, and the Schomburg exhibit on Marcus Garvey. At the end of the summer of 1985, I acquired an announcing shift. That is, I was board engineer in Master Control running the tape of Bill Farrar's jazz sampler from uh, 9 a.m. to noon. Then public affairs tapes from noon to one. This was at the time when, I'll leave that out of it. I don't want to even mention that person's name. Uh, 
Was her da 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 da. Then, uh, then I engineered live in the studio. Well, I engineered live in the studio. Lee Lowenfish's seventh inning stretch. Okay, this is very important. I'm an uncompromising person, especially if I know something. Lee Lonefish, nobody. Wanted. He was, oh man, he was hard to work with, hard to work with. But he needed an engineer for some reason. I don't know why people don't do it. So I would, but I wouldn't compromise. We, we, we would fight right up until the time we're going on it. Going on it, we're smooth. Beautiful program, you know. It said the same thing with Joe Hurley. Fight all of Joe was even worse. We yell at each other, get him on the air, right? And Tell you a little secret. This is what Amy Goodman, Democracy Now! Fight! That's just my day job. <laughs> okay, sorry. <sighs> what was that? During this time, I also uh, contributed film reviews uh, for the drama and literature department, a weekly arts magazine. Uh, art. Arts etc. Some like arts arts extra arts extra. That's what it was. Under the alias T, from the Pattersons, living on the Upper Lower East Side, trying to get to Tibet. Okay. Now this is interesting too. I, w I did a lot of reviews, but I did I, what I would do. I would just go to the movies to do, you know, early on, you know, and I wouldn't go no no passes stuff like that. And I would come from sort of like a street perspective. I'm gonna give you one review that I did, right, for Color Purple. It upset me. I, I, not that I hate the movie. I didn't like the movie, right? But for certain reasons. So what happened? To, uh, so I recorded them ahead of time before putting on. No, sometimes I did it live, but most of the time I recorded ahead of time. So the, the we had this. Um, I recorded them all over the place. We had the, the arts office at the time. That's where I recorded this at, right? Had the door closed, and I started recording, talking about the thing. But then some particular part, I said I came down to Quincy Jones. I said, Quincy, your only job was to whatever it is, and then I, and then, I then I, then I got it. So I opened the windows, these, these big window. We heard the window, and I, I <laughs> this is all sound. And I went out, I looked out the window. I hope you choke on some long blonde hair. And then I went back to the review. Oh gosh. Anyway, we won't get into that. Ah, one review I did one time, uh, some other time. Now I got to tell you this one. Um, uh, Yusuf Lamont, part of Creative Unity, he could do Eddie Murphy's voice, right? Then this other guy came, I forgot, the young guy, he could do Eddie Murphy's voice too. So I, did, I wrote a review for them where they were, Eddie was talking, basically, talk, Eddie was, the one was claiming, you're not really Eddie. And I said, what are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. He said, no, because, no, no, he said, do you see how they're treating you? You can't even get no trim. And he said, oh, yeah, because at that time, you know, black men couldn't be on the city. Anyway, so you, you figure it out. Uh, in October of 1985, I was invited by Rick Harris in his capacity as acting program director, and everybody goes to this stuff, and Tom Whisker to produce a temporary replacement program for Tom's weaponry as he was involved in the crafts fair. A big responsibility. I should show you that crafts fair. Anyway, I am going to show you the crafts fair. I put, yeah, hold on, some crafts fair. Sorry, sorry. Hey, I told you it's going to be long. Hold on. I'm gonna show you something here. I'm gonna show you here. Stay with me. You don't have to stay with me. Like I said, press like and you can, and you can, you know, go someplace else. It'd be fine. I won't be offended. It's all right. That's the reason why I don't have a lot of subscribers because I'm not looking for subscribers or anything like that. Because I told you what the, the purpose of this channel was, whatever it is. And then they walked to, to being ADOS, and I now I try to put everything in ADOS. This cap I got at the crafts here one year. Now you see this, it's amazing cap. Now I can't, well, I had very, I had long locks, right? Long, long, as they say, uh, what they call, I could, they didn't call them fashion, I had long beautiful locks, let's put it that way. And so I would have this, I'm gonna do right. I had this hat on with the locks coming down, and I kid you not, even my niece, when she was young, she thought I was Jesus. Let me tell you, let me tell you one of the things, um, I've never had glad, but I was very, like I said, Buffy, I was good looking, right? But, but the locks are even in the hat, right? So I'm walking to a train car in New York City, and it just happened for some reason there was a lot of Latinos there, and I just walked through to go to the next car. And you can feel them all going like, Jesus, Jesus. I mean, they, 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 it was mesmerized. I walked through the thing. It had that a weird effect on, you know, so anyway. Let me go back. Sorry for the interruptions as usual. Uh, 
Oh uh, no! When 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 they asked when they approached me, I said, "Weapons? I don't. I can't do weapons because of replacement." They said, "No, no, you can do anything you want. Don't worry about it. It's only nine weeks. I think it was nine weeks. It's only nine weeks because of the crash rate. You know, he's a big time mystery." I said, are you sure? Uh, don't worry. Because at that time in engineering, sort of people sort of sense what I think it's Rick just wanted to give me a, a shot. I don't know. Uh, shout out to Rick Harris. Um, okay, here we go. I produce nine now classic specials. <laughs> Programs called Livewire. Tony Sloan on your radio. This program, remember, it's, 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 it's like uh, in the middle of the night. It's like from 2 to 4 or something like that. It's like 2 to 4, right? It was outrageous. <laughs> I mean outrageous. I did things like Gilbert Giles. I showed you this, um, uh, Gilbert Giles who did, who did this, right? I had him on one time. He was in one room doing some art, right? And I would run. I would take the microphone or whatever. I somehow just called all the way to this other room. I said, what you doing now, Gilbert? Da, 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 da. I mean, it was an incredible, just insane program, right? It's nine weeks, right? I had a good time. That's all that mattered. Okay. In January of 1986, there was a tremendous upheaval, one of the many upheavals that WB had at the station. As a result, um, as a result of the of the situation, I stopped contributing to I stopped contributing as film reviewer, stopped my announcing engineering shift, and took our hiatus as a producer to reassess my commitment to the station. Uh, this self-evaluation led me to, to a conclusion that I need to be more technically qualified and as a matter of helping out other producers at the station. Let me go back because now we're 86, but I have been doing emanations, right? Now here's the, Bernard, we had this philosophy of really unbelievable. Like, we would, we would find stories, right? We'll find things to do. You know, I would do the Vox Pop. You know, I'd go out, the program started, I'd go and interview, because we was in the 34th Street area, you know, we had the post office there, the train station. So I can interview any kind of people. Let me tell you something about if you're going to interview people, you want to really find somebody, I don't know about this day, but find somebody wearing a hat. For some reason, people with hats, they are. Uh, so I would I would edit that tape of Vox Pop. And Vox Pop, you know, I would my voice wouldn't be there. So the story, the people, whatever, the, you know, uh, uh, say the story was like uh, a racism, you know what I mean? And so people, would say, but I would tell the story with people's comments on racism. You see? And then that would that would be the the the, the lead off for whatever we was doing that night. But one important thing that I learned from Bernard, and bless him, Bernard. Bernard, I hear he's kind of sick down in North Carolina. You know, hey, Bernard, man, yo, man. <sighs> anyway. Um, uh, 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 if we do a story and it gets picked up, we leave it alone and find the next story. For instance, Mamia uh, Abul Jamal, right? He was a he was a, a reporter in Philly. I think it was at WDAS, and we hooked up with, with the whole move thing. We 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 we, we interviewed him right there. This is before he was in jail, you know. Was, so he, he, you see this? Okay, no, I need to say, so. so we had connections in the political sphere. Okay. Um, as a medical help, uh, the at the station, I would have, I would have to purchase equipment to record in the community, as as uh, as I prefer to say, gather sound. Okay, I gather sound in the community. I also felt, uh, for me to produce again, I needed to bring others to the station, of of my others to the station of my elk, people who like think like me or whatever. All right. To this end, I approached a group of young people I had worked with in other capacities on and off for two years. And this this was crazy. It was at the School of Visual Arts. I was a model there. But they would do poetry programs. They would do programs and I would sort of just in their friends maybe help them out if they wanted to. Right? And to create the unity. I trained this group of artists in radio and became executive producer of the Creative Unity Collective when they went on the air September twenty first, nineteen eighty six. Oh, since they have left because of the whole things have been here now. But this is weirdly um, how I told them. I said, "Look, you'll do some great things because they would use, they would do some incredible work. They would do Ronald Reagan, you'll do Ed Koch, but they were black. So I knew that on stage they would have to make some judgment. But I said, if you did it on radio, hey, Bob Jungle, okay, okay, great. Uh, uh, September twenty first, nineteen eighty six, okay." Uh, this is interesting. Since late, since late, late, 
since late last year, I have been oh, petitioning for a time slot to do a program. Wednesdays, 9 a.m. to noon was the result. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole drama how I got on the air. I got on the air, so I had to slip on the air because the program director hated me. He went on vacation. The arts director was, was acting program director like, like, like Rick was, right? And she put me on the air. When he came back, he couldn't say that. I guess he couldn't say nothing. I don't know. Now I come to the point of all this background with myself. Back on all myself. There are many ways people come to the airways of WBAI. My road has been has been volunteer, assistant to a producer, announcer, engineer, contributing producer, producer, trainer, executive producer, and now producer host. I prefer the term facilitator of a regularly scheduled program. For me, each time each time slot is unique to the rhythm of the day and as a matter of course, the scope and temperament of the producer facilitator. You got all that? Okay, because remember, hold on, this is 86 and I graduated, you know, undergraduate school in 78 and I had been doing, oh, 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 I forgot this, but I'll, 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 some other time. But I still been calling in rate, I don't know, some other time with that. So what I'm trying to say, I had a, um, and because I, you see my paper, I, I basically programmed the radio scene. Oh, B, BGO didn't happen because while we were going through that, um, uh, WRSU, yeah, uh, not RSU, that's okay, um, RVR, at the uh, at Riverside Church, they got a light somehow, and they, um, and they, oh, RVR, um, the Riverside Church got rid of the station. So there was no more jazz. So basically, BGO became the jazz station for the area. You got it? So it did, didn't become a... They got the license. Somehow they got the license, but then somehow uh, the, the guy, I forgot the name, or whatever, some some some, some, some white guy, uh, he, he got it so that, that basically uh, BGO now became the jazz station because there's no jazz station in the area. And then whew, it all took off. There we go. Oh, I wasn't involved at that point because I just wrote the thing. Yeah, I wasn't Okay, whatever. Um, Currently, uh, 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 in the 9 a.m. to noon time slot on Mondays, we have specials. Tuesday, we have Cynthia Bell and music. Wednesdays, Wednesdays, it's me. Thursdays, Delphine Blue and music. Fridays, it's Stormy Monday. Okay, stop. Okay, I have to. Okay, Friday is a stormy Monday. And they said, but stormy Monday is a Friday. They, their program when they first came on was on Monday. So when they switched schedules, changed all the time. They switched into Friday. They just kept the name Stormy Monday. Okay, here we go. I'm laughing because you see, Fridays is stormy Monday, with music, with music, and culture, and insanity. Music, culture, and insanity. I'm telling you, if you ever heard Stormy Monday back in the day. In fact, one time you had to write up your, your blurbs in your in your in, in, the, in, the, in the folio, the, the program guide, right? And when, when I was on the air for a while, I, I put um, no more radio. Arguably, the third best radio, the third best program on radio. The first being Stormy Monday. The second, whoever you want to put in there, I'm the third best. <laughs> See, I'm out lies, out lies. Okay, sorry. Gotta get back with this. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Oh, gosh. Music, culture, and insanity hosted by James the Brown and David the Jackson. It's James Brown and David Jackson. James uh, James Brown also became a big-time host at BGO, coincidentally. Uh, David Jackson, oh, man, peace and blessing on his eternal soul. He's just a, a literary force. Man. They, well, uh, one time, somebody, he was, I think he was writing for... Maybe, I think he was writing for Village Voice also. You know, the whole Greg Tate era, you know, whatever. Somebody wrote in a, I think he said, he, I think he was, somebody said, uh, or he, look, somehow it came to that. Is there any English translation of, of Greg Tate's work? You know, because Greg is a writer's outlier. Okay, I'm going off script now, sorry. Saturdays brings us David Rothenberg's live radio with a focus on culture and music. Paul Gorman follows with live radio. And Sundays, we have Chris Wynn and European classic music, after which we have Mike Fader with what what, what he does. I think last I heard, Mike Fader was on Sirius. I don't know what's going on this folks now. As we can see, a pattern is established. My feeling is that I must reinforce the pattern while also bridging and adding. 
from my experience. To this, 9 a.m. to noon, there will be a program pattern or the time slot, right? I view this Wednesday slot as hump days, as a hump day slot, right? You know, open a hump day in the middle of the week, right? Some sort of uh, adhesive to bridge Monday, sun, um, to bridge Sunday through Tuesday on one side and Thursday through Saturday on the other. I want to deal with all the elements of the week's program with the possible exception of the live radio component. To me, uh, live radio means a producer has been at WBA long enough to amass a following or dedicated listening audience, if you will, but has done so many other things at WBI that, I should say, and also in life, WBI, that the only thing left to do is to communicate directly with the listeners or dedicated constituency. I am nowhere near that level. At this station, at this station, I also have some things to develop and work out that will serve this uh, time slot well. I think, for instance, I want to bring more poetry uh, to the airwaves. Keep on going. I'm referring to the poets uh, I tape live in my travels, as well as material I can get from others in 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 my sound gathering network. Okay. Remember, this is 86. We, uh, Melvin and I had started sound grabs, I think in, uh, well, I guess I just got a station in 83, so it was like 83, because we, I told the story somewhere, basically we started sound grabs, it was a loose association of people who recorded around the city, usually, um, city, usually, um, usually heavy cultural programs, or more specifically political forums, you know, like, uh, like, uh, what, what, what Alami and them was doing at, uh, 126, we, at, at that school, 126, whatever, whatever it was, okay. Um, and so we, we, that's another story. I think I, uh, maybe I'll put the link to it. Uh, network. Sound I gathered at political forums such as, as such will also appear from time to time on the normal radio, of course. Is that it? Oh, that's it. Okay. So that's it. That's, that's my whole thing. And no more radio started. Now, let's leave it there. Now. At some particular point, now remember, no, no, no more radio, no more radio. At some particular point, what happened was, it was like, every arts director we got, because Giselle Mills put me on the air, she was arts director, then she left, and yeah, we kept on getting these arts directors, and they were, remember, I'm in the arts department, I'm doing audio drama, whatever have you, I got my group, or whatever have you, and these arts directors were doing nothing, they were like, the, the last one we had, I think, what do you do, they used to go to, he used to go to the, the, the you know the art openings and just eat drink the wine and eat the che- eat wine and cheese like that, and and the arts department at this time because they they blended the arts department and the music department into one. The arts department was basically like drama and literature. I was in drama and literature and uh, like like uh, reviews like you know um, dance reviews, film reviews, that kind of you know that kind of music reviews like that, or you know concert reviews, and so. Uh, so it was an unyielding thing because they put two things together and it was, it was, nobody could handle it, right? And basically, I got tired of this. I said, look, they're not hiring the right people. So for them, who, so I put my resume in. I did not want the job, okay? Because I'm trying to, I'm doing some other stuff, you know what I mean? I'm doing all my radio, I'm doing some engineering, make a little money, I'm trying to get my week down to three days a week so I can go back to school for four days. You understand what I'm saying? So, so I just put my resume and said, well, whoever's going to come to this thing, they got to beat me. <laughs> they got to beat the, They got to beat me on paper. Again, I did not want the job. But I have other things to do, right? Plus, I didn't, I don't want, I'm not an administrator. I'm just like a, see, these, these are management jobs, you know what I mean? And a manager is something different. You know, when, uh, you know, when people go into a management position, they think, oh, I deserve it. No, you have to have management skills. In fact, when I first got the job, I, I told Valerie, you know, Valerie was the stage manager at the time. I said, look, you gotta, you gotta send me to some, some school, some, some whatever have you. She wouldn't do it. In fact, I won't. Say, no, let me say this. Some people, I just rub some people the wrong way for a bunch of reasons. I understand. My class is on. <laughs> Valerie is one of those people. But luckily, she wasn't. You know, she, see, see the, 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 the. Everything is under the program director. The management is supposed to do the management. They have nothing to do with programming. Okay, I know this because when I was in uh, uh, undergraduate school, one of my one of my uh, things was to be. Um, I did an internship, you know, at a, at a radio station in New Brunswick. And so what happened? In the internship, 
I was part of the copy department. Now, copy is sort of under the sales department, and then you have the on-air personality. And what usually happens is the on, out of the on-air personality or that, that ranks will come your program director. Out of the sales rank will become your manager because that's what happens, right? Okay. Um, in fact, the copy department, I was really bad. But what, what I did, I'm sorry, what I did, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I want this internship, but I want to go out with the salespeople because I want to see where they, where they got the information then we take the, we take it and make this, the, you know, the copy, you know, the, the, the advertising person say. And, uh, and this is interesting, so I have to go off on this because this is very important. I kid you not, it sounds like a, a cliche. Here's the thing. When I first went out, when I first went there at the station, I kid you not, the guy, the, 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 the guy, was going out to, to make a sales call to, to try, try to buy some airtime, whatever have you. So he went to his car. He was a, a you know, a hefty guy, bad guy, you know, white guy, of course. And he, I, I'm going to make like he smoked a cigar, right? I'm not saying he did, but this is a stereotype I have in my mind, right? And he was getting to the car. He said, so he's on the driver's side. He was getting on the, on, the, on the driver's side. I was getting on the passenger side. He said, hold on, kid. He said, kid, hold on, kid. Let me tell you something. Here's what we're gonna do. You tell them what you tell them what they're gonna get. You give it to them, and you tell them what they got. Now I gotta figure that out. Oh, now I realize what he's saying. You make sure you're in control, right? And here's the trick. At WBAI, we may tell you what you're gonna get. We probably tell you what you get. We never, or well, the philosophy when I grow, we never tell you what you got because it's evidence. And we never tell you what to think after that. We never trap you, and you have to make up your own mind. And that's a that's a that, that's the difference between community radio and a bunch of other things, right? Or sales. You see, we we we, we may tell you what you're going. Well, we we'll probably tell you what you're going to get. We give it to you, but we never tell you what you got. You you you're, you're smart like everybody. You're supposed to figure it out yourself. These news programs and these programs you see, what they, they tell you what you're going to get. They 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 give it to you, and then they try to tell you what it is. What? It's like you ain't got no brain. So those people who listen to these news programs, I don't care what you, the, the, the mainstream media, as they say, well, we have these, these pretend people that try to, you know, be like mainstream people. All they're doing is trying to control your thoughts. And you like it is, not, not everybody, you like it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, right, right, right. <sighs> Sorry, I had to go off. So anyway, let me go back. Now, I'm, I digress. So then, uh, so as I was being, um, uh, as just before I began, so what happened was I forgot, it was like a year process, they, I, don't, I don't know how many people they saw, you know, and I wasn't even paying attention because I was heavy involved in doing uh, uh, The Outsider, you know, The Outsider, this is The Outsider, Richard Wright's book, uh, what I did is I took, well, let me, where's the, uh, uh, is there a newspaper? Oh, well, here it is. I mean, I, had to, I was—I mean, I was basically the producer. I did everything for the outsider. Now, even at the time, come back over that glass. This is an Amsterdam News, uh, January 26, 1991. The outsider was done on the 31st, 1991, right? And here is two separate. Uh, two, uh, that was 19, January 26, and this one was. Okay, what's what's the year? What? Dated this. I don't know if date on this one. And this was oh January 23rd to 29th. Oh, oh, see, this was in the Silly Sun. This was in the Amsterdam News. This was in the City Sun at the time. Uh, January 23rd to 29th. This is a weekly paper, I guess. Uh, so this is the advertising we have. Now, um, uh, Yusef and Rodney were the ones that always did the, the advertising, right? So they have a certain style, right? And this was the outsider. And it says, Life, hell, death, rebirth, hell. That's interesting. Amen. Can a man truly disappear within himself, yet affect the lives and histories of his friends, family, his race? Right. Follow the tortured soul of an African American through the sociological and psychological landscape of America, circa 1950. Richard Rice, the outsider, presented January 28th, 8:30 p.m. to 3:30 a.m. Okay, part one is called Dread, and uh, part two is called The Outsiders from his, uh, and that's uh, basically it's two Richard Rice books, um, uh, the, uh, uh, 
do a, a, a law today and the outside. I think I read it someplace. Okay. That's in that. But in the City Sun, that's the City Sun advertisement. In the Amsterdam News, right, the advertisement's small, right? We had a budget. Radio drama, a lot of radio drama, right? In honor of Henry F. Winslow Sr. Henry Winslow was the captain of, well, he was a, he was a, he was a critic for a long time. And he, and I met him, and I used to sit with him. I used to sit with old people, you know what I mean? I'd go visit them and sit with old people. I did this from, when I was a teenager, I used to do this. I still do this now, you know? You gotta listen to old people, man. I mean, just sit with them. Just listen to them. Shut up. Pay attention, right? I said the same thing, can a man, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but Henry F. Winslow Jr., he wrote the review for The Outsider, and he said, a classy line, The Outsider uh, character, character, Cross Damon, is a bigger, bigger Thomas. Cross Damon, the title character for the, or the, the main character for The Outsider, is a bigger, bigger Thomas. What he meant, what he means by that, is when uh, when he wrote, uh, 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 what's it, with a native son, a bigger Thomas, he purposely wrote it like a two-dimensional character, and when it took off, he got, I don't want to say, I don't know what was in Rich's head, I, I know he sort of really said, oh man, what did I do? Because that was a projection of black men out into the world, that two-dimensional character. So so he rewrote, basically he rewrote the outside, he rewrote Native Son as the outsider. That's why Damon Thomas, Damon Son, um, whatever, Damon, Cross Damon is a, is a, He's an incredible character. Okay. Oh, and uh, featuring the voices of, oh, let's see who's in here. Mark Crawford, the artist Mark Crawford. So I, I recruited all these people. Uh, Curtis L. Taylor, Harry Poe. Oh, Daruba Ben Wahan was in this. Wow. I better look at this thing again. It's supposed to be, I guess. Basir uh Andrew W. Cooper, Chris Kurt, Kurt Lampkin, great voice. Poet. He's also became the uh, one of the poet in residence for No More Radio. Him and, and uh, uh, Sophia Henderson Holmes, a piece of blessing. You know, terms of, I love Sophia so much. I miss him. Uh, Kevin McGruder, uh, Alambe Breath, Don Byron, the musician Don Byron, you know, Alambe. Greg Javon Mills, Arthur Wilson, from Public Wow, James Small, Bruce Mack, Stanley Hill, Sam Anderson, Reverend Derek, whoever. Lance Morland, uh, somebody, someone McKay, and William Butler. This is, I gotta look at wait, let me look at this thing in this outsider. I'm not sure I had all those people there. Maybe that was announced they were supposed to be involved, but they never got involved. Maybe that's what, yeah, because this is the final outsider script here. Maybe these people, maybe these people were invited and they just bumped off. I don't know what happened there. Uh, so this is the outsider cast. Um, I won't go into this, but this is the outsider. And actually, it ended up going from 8.30 uh, in the p.m. all the way to like something like 5.30, 60, like something like 5.30 in the morning. No commercial break. What we did was we, um, what we did was we, we started New Regan Post Cafe live with an audience there, whatever happened, and it was like, that was incredible. Then what happened, we had, we had the news that we had the news of the day, while we was doing the first part, right, Yusef was at this, because remember I trained everybody in how to edit and stuff like that. Yusef was at the station because the news appeared, I think from 7.30 to 8, some, somehow, news appeared right before this, this thing. So what Yusef did was took the news of the day, we took out the presenters, you know, you, you, somebody said, and here from, you know, whatever, and they would, you know, go, go to wherever the report was, right? So the, the anchors, if you want to put, were, were in the station. But we did, what you said, he took, because the tape, the, they would re -re record the news and then rebroadcast it later on. Yusuf took the tape, cut them out, and he replaced them with his voice, still using the same copy that they used, but affecting a 1950s voice. You get it? So, so when the news rebroadcast, this is about 45 minutes, rebroadcast at 11 or whenever it was 12, whenever it was rebroadcast, right? I took the time to take the cast from the New York and Post Cafe. We came up to the station. So basically, the, the, while we were 
doing this. The news was, the news that they was replaced was was playing, but with the voice of somebody like uh, somebody from the 1950s. And then when the news uh, ended, we continued to play. So in a weird sort of way, it was the we, the whole experience 